Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours. I'm your host Jinx and we are joined as always by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. A lot going on today with a few different uh, topics of discussion for the agenda. So let's kick it off uh, first of all with uh, foundation and DAO updates. Zach and Shane, anything y'all want to share? Uh, I'll just jump in real quick. We don't have a ton. We are obviously going to eat Denver next week. So um, all of the foundation run chats and events will be canceled um, and postponed till March. Um, I think Shane, I'll leave the update for you. I think that's pretty great. Uh, what other things? We're going to have a retro PGF post go up in the next, probably in the next day or two. I uh, would love to get people's uh, thoughts and opinions on that. It should be a, a pretty nice thing for everybody in the community. Um, so yeah, just focusing on like how we can make it fair and better versus, uh, yeah, versus anything else. Um, I think that's it on my end for right now. Dane on the tech updates. Yeah, uh, folks can hear me. Yep. All right. Yeah. So um, uh, the team is uh, continuing with trying to get to testnet uh, in terms of the uh, Cosmos SDK migration. That was uh, for the most part successful um, in terms of uh, the the migration is happening exactly as expected. There's been some testing and it seems to uh, be successful. The team did put a, a goal to um, uh, complete that this week and it looks like they're on track so the migration is is happening successfully there is still some issues with uh deploying with rollkit and so there's been a lot of talk with the rollkit team they're uh helping us uh you know we're we're, we're helping point out some some things and, and providing them data so that they can triangulate uh some challenges on their side so uh so that so the effort to getting mainnet or, or testnet is ongoing um but there has been uh, great progress with the migration, which was kind of the, the biggest uh, challenge uh, that the uh, development team was currently facing. So good thing. Uh, so a lot of good things on that front. Um, uh, we also last week we had some uh, we had some progress with the tokenomics. Uh, I came up with a new tokenomics model that uh, will allow trustless gateways in Shannon. Um, Really, the technical side of trustless gateways isn't isn't been a challenge. It's been the tokenomics side. So, uh, yeah. So the tokenomics is moving uh, moving along now. We're we're, we're getting some uh, uh, good traction with it. So we're going to be sharing much more uh, in the coming future. I actually might be talking about it a little bit tomorrow on the builders call, um, so folks can have an understanding of kind of where our minds at right now. Um, but yeah, that's that's really been kind of the biggest non technical. Uh, piece to Shannon that that hasn't been fully fleshed out. Um, but it looks like we're on a path to having trusted gateways, uh, you know, being able to maintain whatever kind of APY we want to be able to maintain um, uh, without the uh, without some of the vulnerabilities that would come from like self dealing, or some of the challenges that we would face uh, that we currently face in Morse, which is why PNF has had to take such a central role in in uh, controlling certain parts of the ecosystem. So, yeah, uh, really positive stuff on that front, and we'll be sharing more tomorrow about it. Beautiful. Thanks. I actually have uh, one more if I can jump in. Sure. Uh, I, I just want to call out that we put a post a couple weeks ago looking for technical leadership and um, DAO observers, and so we haven't had a lot of uh, traction on the on the forum for that, but um, the we've given an end date. I think it's next week, but we would really love for people to weigh in. And if anybody thinks they'd be a good fit for the observer, um, or if they know anybody who would be a good technical leader or technical observer, um, please weigh in there. We'd love more options. So, um, and again, that closes. I think next week. It might be shortly after that. Okay. Can you drop a link to that uh, in the chat here? Yeah, I'll do that shortly. Thank you. You got it. We'll uh, we'll share it out again on Twitter as well. Uh, gateway updates. Uh, Fred, Gabby, uh, y'all got any updates from Grove you want to talk about? Uh, nothing from my end today. Same here. Wow, gallery easy. Uh, do we have, nope, no notice folks on here? Okay. Uh, 
Where is there? You go, Ramiro. Uh, do you guys want to talk about uh, your recent updates with Pocket Scan? Hello. Sure. Well, as everybody can see now, uh, we are featuring all the new version features. <laughs> so, in the the main ones is that now you can see all the delegated uh, stake that you have, all the rewards how they are delegated, how they are shared among a node. For example, if you go to Node Runner and choose a bunch of your nodes, you will get to know where are all your rewards going and how it is being shared under the new paradigm. Uh, also, we will be showing you if your if you are losing money by climbing relays, that's a topic that we will discuss later, I think. But we will be showing that also in the now runners tab. Uh, and finally, we have added, we have changed a little the the relays, the, the main in the in the main dashboard. We have changed the relays graph. Right now, it's showing the the relays as always, but we have decided to also add a uh, number of minted tokens there and uh, uh, something that we call computed cost. That is essentially the number of relays that the network is doing if all the relays are worth the same. This is uh, looking forward to when LLMs start, for example, working and they just to say a number, I don't know how much they will cost, but it's supposed that they will cost 100 times of what costs a, a simple relay, then we will, if there are 1,000 relays and 110 relays from LLMs, you will have in total 2,000 compute units because you computed 1,000 relays, normal relays from blockchains and 10 relays at a cost of 100 each relay of the LLMs, for example. So it will give you a a clearer view if the network is growing beyond uh, the the basic number of of, in, of RPCs that we are processing, because some RPCs will start to cost more. So that's those are the the main changes on Pocket Scan. The rest is just as always working. Beautiful. And you want to talk uh, briefly about the proposal that y'all just put up? Okay. Uh, well, also. We have uh, posted a proposal to to create some. It's I call it a laboratory because I was a little inspired by, by your earlier posts because mm -hmm. it's a it's a project that it it's a little more ambitious than a simple socket. We think what we want to do is to provide uh, guidance for quality of service of of machine learning models that can be deployed in the network, give advice on how to measure them, create a, a great software to, to measure it, to, to be, so the gateways can have some way of doing that because it's not so simple. Also see what kind of models we can easily add to our network, what are those the requirements for these models, how can we make it easier for machine learning developers to deploy their models in the pocket network without having to go through all the pocket uh, documentation that is not friendly for uh, someone coming from the ML, ML world. So we want to like, bridge also make bridge that gap between these two worlds and, and make it easy for them so it's a rather general socket but we will be working mostly on LLMs at first and trying to provide quality of service metric for that it's not quality of service service per se it's more like the the metrics that we are used to see in in places like hugging pace for those who know a little about machine learning models and that are the ones that the people that are consuming these models want to know before they they start consuming relays from from this model. So what we want to do is just to have like our version of that online for people to know how the models in Pocket are working before yeah. consuming. Do you have, a, if you can, or if anybody else has the form up, if you can drop a link to that in the sidebar as well, I think that's uh, that's worth sharing here. Okay. Uh, hey, Ramiro, uh, I've, I've got a question uh, about that. 
that I just kind of thought kind of on the fly as you were talking. How how exactly is the I guess the research gonna be um uh shared or accessible like uh just I you know I'm thinking like on an open source level like like on uh developing in an open source fashion uh you know is this going to be kind of like where a final report comes out that just kind of says what you know what what was researched or something or is this going to be kind of done in a progressive fashion where you know uh where there's you know more data points that that people can follow or tests or something of that nature um i don't know something on testnet or something that's able to uh you know be utilized or anything I, i'm just trying to yeah is this is the final result like a written report or is it um kind of tooling or things of that nature uh, I uh you're muted right now you uh you muted yourself ramiro well Ramiro, did you answer the question? You were you were muted for a while when you started talking. Uh, did we lose him? Can you hear me now? Okay, oh. we can hear you. Well, what I wanted to say uh, is, yeah, we, we are going to make everything open source and develop in the open, and we will have a GitHub repository probably. We have to work with that with PNF. And also to do the research uh, on the open. We'll try to have some Discord channel to do that so everyone can look what we are looking at in the meantime. But what we want to have as deliverables are, yeah, written reports on one side because we have to formulate uh, the explanations on, on all these subjects. So we expect to have like monthly reports at least from this, trying to make in the kind of blog posts or, or big forum posts and and also create some kind of TLDRs for, from all these things and the things that we are we are observing. And we also expect to have deliverables in the forms of software, things that gateways can deploy in the in their pipelines and and start measuring the models and finally also create some kind of database that could be populated by by these uh, processes of measuring the the models in the network and then that database could be used to create a live um, leaderboard of all the models that we have and, and also compare to other models such as or other providers such as OpenAI or or Perplexity or, or anyone. Okay, very cool. Yeah, appreciate that uh, explanation. That sounds great. Beautiful. Uh, next up on our agenda is uh, a topic from uh, Ben Van, and uh, I think Ramiro alluded to it, which is uh, there is, seems to be an excessive number of low relay count sessions causing block bloat and uh, potentially resulting in ne negative value proof claim submissions. Uh, ben Van, you want to uh, introduce that? Yeah, sure. Um, the Let's see. Um, let me give a tiny bit of back history. Uh, um, back in the day when we still had five notes per session, one of the original, uh, a, a problem which showed up uh, caused by the cherry picker um, was that the cherry picker was testing those nodes um, more than 10 times per hour or more than 10 times per session, which would take the number of relays to a number greater than 10, even though there was no native traffic on that actual chain or in that actual session, which would basically guarantee that there's a maximum number of possible proof claims happening uh, every single block, even though there were no 
transactions at all on that session. Um, and that was resulting in a huge amount of block bloat at the time. And um, we worked that through with Alex uh, to get the cherry picker cleaned up to make sure that the, the measurement process itself was not causing block bloat. Um, moving forward, uh, just yesterday morning, um, uh, our side was investigating why the heck we're running out of transaction fees so quickly um, and uh, realized that we've got a ton of extremely low count um, sessions. Uh, so my immediate suspicion was that the uh, having extra gateways, we have twice as many gateways. Um, my fear was that, that the gateways doubled without this piece of folklore knowledge, that total number of tests per node um, needs to be less than, well, needs to not trigger a proof claim process or you'll literally just blow the network with transactions that not only don't need to be there, they don't actually even represent real traffic, their test traffic. Um, so, A, I think that has happened. Um, and the, unless, I don't know um, if there's some other major source for where transactions, uh, you know, another a legitimate source for transactions, I suspect this is um, over testing. Um, and of course, as, as we mentioned, it's a uh, small enough test, any um, a number less than 22 is actually negative value. So you're not only bloating the blockchain, obviously, you're spending money in order to bloat the blockchain. Um, and I suggest that we immediately um, up the um, minimum number of proofs uh, to at least get rid of those. Uh, there are two um, other potential issues, um, or one, one other potential cause also related to uh, gateway expansion, um, which are the stake, the, the now, now that we can modify stakes. One of the reasons that we went to get stakes uh, initially was to reduce the number of total transactions. Um, each application creates an entire new session. Um, so if you have three different apps that are all querying Ethereum, there are, instead of the 25 nodes in a session, there are now 75 nodes in that session, logically. There's actually three separate sessions, but a total of 75 nodes, which are going to submit proofs and claims. Uh, that's a, you know, a tripling. So the gateway provider um, providers need to be aware of and, uh, how, well, simply the fact that they're multiplying um, potentially multiplying section participants uh, if you're using more than one at stake. Uh, Per, per chain, or, or, or if you're only using one app stake per chain, et cetera. Um, I don't know, like I say, my main uh, suspicion is that some of this um, knowledge uh, may have been lost. And uh, as we are, I think, all aware, we looks like we've doubled the size of blocks in the last two months. Uh, that's a lot of bloat. Um, and I think that's all I have. Like I said, we, I just 
uh, ran across this yesterday morning and started running it, running it down. Um, my understanding is that there are only two gateways now, but I heard that there might be three. Uh, does anyone know? And I'm looking for more information on uh, what has happened to uh, the data stakes, app stakes, now that they appear to be transferable. Uh, are we moving away from these? Single app states uh, that have a lot of pocket and splitting that up. Um, because if so, that's you know, a major, also going to be a major contributor to why the blocks are expanding. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, I apologize for not catching this. I wasn't watching that closely. Like I say, I just was investigating where all the different fees are going. Um, so we've got some questions in the uh, side chat here. First, Fred asks, why are QoS tests not legitimate? And Jackal asks, have we ruled out the WPocket bridge as a source of transaction load? Um, I haven't ruled out that. I don't have any contested or I'm not familiar with how much the W pocket bridge effect has. Um, and um, as to whether or not test transactions are legitimate, um, they're certainly not uh, from an economic protocol point of view. They're, they're an internal uh, measurement. I mean, it would absolutely, they are, they're small. Um, but they represent relay requests that we are sending to ourselves. Um, that's not in my I would Go ahead. I'll, yeah, I will just very briefly comment and say that every single test relay that is spawned by a gateway is covered by the burn. And therefore, they are just, we are just another consumer of RPCs and we pay for our RPCs like anybody else. So, from my perspective, QoS relays are just as legitimate as long as they're burned for. Okay. I, I have no problem with that. I mean, I, okay. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect the fact that we're, it doesn't affect the result of that process, which is to create small relay sessions tiny tiny relay count sessions and that's what's loading the chain i can agree with that okay yeah i think i think whether or not the transactions are legitimate is a red herring i think it's, it seems like the issue is um <clears throat> essentially inefficient sessions from a from an economic standpoint for the nodes because uh, they're having to submit these riffs and claims, but are not actually uh, uh, receiving a number of relays that makes that worth it. Um, would would that be a, a a good interpretation? I think so. Yeah. So rather than so, I get because because there's two paths forward with that. It's either recommend gateways alter their testing methods, which seems. Um, not ideal uh, to to restrict gateways in that way if it potentially impacts QoS. Or the other direction is to increase the minimum number of proofs parameter. Um, would there be any reason we sh uh, would there be any downside to increasing the minimum number of proof parameters so that it creates more of that buffer for testing to to take place? No, I think that's probably the right solution. Um, and have to ask the gateway provider first. We think we have two, right? We have Grove and we have Nodes. There's no third one out there, am I correct? That is correct, um, but we are looking, We have two two or three in the pipeline. Um, so between now and Shannon, uh, we expect to onboard an additional two or three, okay. at least. We need to confirm with them what their, what their testing transaction volume is. Uh, 
let's say they're sending, you know, uh, 10 per session each. You got to step to a minimum of 20, right? Um, and if we had more coming on, uh, we had we need to step to a higher number. Uh, it's not the negative. The negative value question is, in my mind, kind of secondary to uh, the testing transactions creating. Uh, well, the maximum, literally the maximum number of sessions of, of uh, transactions per block are being created if you're testing them to the point where they submit. Yeah, yeah. You mind if I jump in? Sure. Um, so I want to preface what I'm about to say with the fact that we are conflating maybe 10 different problems and ideas all at once. So the context I'm about to provide, we're not going to come to a solution within this hour, but I will at least preface and plant a lot of seeds with different things that we can do and different levers that we can pull. So that's the preface I'm about to come into a, a little bit of a monologue. Number one, regarding gateways, there's two on more, and then there are more coming in the district. We are just talking to more. Uh, there is a risk of blocking bloat. One of the big reasons why we're moving from more to Canon, and it's, there's multiple facets to it, but one of them is to enable permissionless demand, which means permissionless gateways and permissionless applications from a technical point of view. Right? So economics is one piece. The economy is another piece. Of the, uh, the ecosystem is another piece. But simply, from a technical perspective, one of the big pieces we're building in Canon is having scalable permissionless demand. Now, in Moors, before we get there, there's we can, for example, increase the block size. It's not a long-term solution, but it is a band-aid because we have things like leaking off. A few years ago, if you increase the block size, you also have to have set up multiple new servers that you have to replicate the entire DB. Today, that's not the case. So again, not a solution, but a band-aid. Another band-aid is increasing the, uh, the number of required proofs. Another band-aid is something we might put together called probability proofs uh, to reduce a number of uh, to reduce the number of claim of transactions, which is 80 plus percent of every single block. Um, and for Band-Aid, and this is why the Band-Aid is permission in Morse, is specifically because there is this institutional knowledge where we kind of guide gateways around how they should be managing their state. Now, I know I'm throwing out a lot of content out there, and it's probably lying over most people's heads. But the idea is that we have maybe five to ten different problems here, ranging from implementation to parameters to ecosystem and everything else. And there's about five to ten different solutions that we can have in Moors. And this is actually why we're doing Shannon, so that everything will be, so that all of these problems we'll never have to worry about. Um, so obviously, like, we should keep the conversation going, but uh, you know, myself and Ben and Ramiro, everyone who's discussing this, uh, we got to get analytical about it. Um, we start figuring out what is the growth of these transactions, figure out like what are time, like, did it affect the timelines of the entities we need to pull, uh, push in more, or do we reduce the scope of standard to get there faster? Uh, there's definitely a lot here, uh, but the important thing is that there's a lot of loading for the to alleviated, number one being what the event said is um, making sure that every gateway operator understands what you can take start. And I think this is also, also a really good time for me to call out that I actually have a PR in the pocket for repo. I put it together a couple of weeks ago that uh, adds a lot of documentation and charts and explanations for gateway management in more, not in Shannon. 
Um, um, but Toshi has been kind enough to review it. We should get it in, merged in over the next, over the next one to two weeks. Uh, so that'll be a foundation for this education, but not a final solution. Okay, I'm done with the monologue. Hopefully that was good context. Also, just my clarification. It was good for me. I thought, I thought all of it, I agree with the overall plan. Um, I am, I know I'm not trying to spark a fire here or anything, um, but I do think we should rather immediately um, apply one of these mitigators, which is bump up that minimum submit number. Um, and that's all. That, now, that's just a matter of doing a proposal, correct? Because this is a parameter, right? Yeah, PNF can just do it, I believe. I mean, they, they might need to ask permission first, but I believe that's who has the keys. Yeah, I mean, if someone has already kind of written up or messaged someone about the, you know, this issue or something, like have something in writing, um, I would say just post it to the forum. Uh, and then, you know, it would be very easy to then just, uh, you know, attach a... Uh, um, <clears throat> You know, attach a, a quick vote. Is this the kind of thing where if we put it up for a quick vote, um, you know, that that takes a week or whatever, it would affect anything? Like, like, like will one more week of a look, uh, you know, larger than what we would like blocks be a big encumbrance? Not in my mind, but sooner is better. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, like there's some, it's not really clear, kind of in, you know, from my understanding, it's not super clear, like, what does BNF need permission to do versus what needs to be a DAO vote. Um, I mean, I guess really the, the main, this doesn't affect the network other than gateways. Uh, and gateways aren't, like, specifically defined in, you know, pockets current constitution or anything which is why it's going to be updated and everything with the new creds model but uh so this could be something where just kind of with general at least public consensus on like grove side and notice side, like hey we're okay with bumping this up um I, I i don't really think it would need to go through a vote but you know i don't know maybe jack could provide some light here it would so if we're talking about changing an unchain parameter like a minimum number of proofs or notes per session, uh, it would need to go through a DAO vote. Um, if you're talking about encouraging gateways to use certain best practices for testing in order to minimize their impact, then obviously that's a gateway, an off chain um, practice. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm reading from comments from Fred uh, uh, and others is that uh, that would not be ideal if we're having to constrain. Um, uh, gateways overly um, uh, and and impact their ability to maintain high QoS. Yeah, it sounds like then maybe the best thing to do would be just to get a quick vote up. You know, ASAP. I don't think we need to leave you know a long time for people to debate or anything. I mean, you could we could basically just put it up to vote uh, with an explanation of what this is, and while the debate while the vote's going on, people could you know debate it. Because um, we'll still have you know seven or so days to fully flush it out. So I would say if we wanted to move fast with this, just we we need just need to get it on writing and get it on the forum. I I don't know enough of how to explain all this, so this would be great if someone in the know can just write up a little blurb. It doesn't have to be huge. It can just be you know to the point. And then uh, you know I'd be happy to help make sure that it gets to the vote. Uh, gets up on the, you know, gets up on the forum, people hear about it. Um, and then from there, we just have a live discussion while the vote's up and people can make, you know, vote at any time. They can also change their vote at any time. And we could really have this solution done in a week. Okay. Um, just a, a note in general, um, we need to, this could end up being a bit like the, uh, some other past issues. We need to very much separate the discussion of changing that number from any discussion of 
buses, of how many gateways, of how testing is being done, of whether or not app stakes are multiplying, um, because it can you know, turn into a whole bunch of stuff, um, and the, the and discussion risks turning into debate uh, over what the perfect number should be or you know, and weird stuff happens. Like people start saying, well, Shannon will take care of this. Let's just wait six months. You know? um, uh, and just a note to uh, other code runners here, um, the node runners themselves have the ability to, of course, solve this problem. I've already fixed it on my end. I just don't submit anything less than 35. Easy enough. Um, so it can be individually solved without involving foundation or anything. Isn't this solved by what Coder did? That now we have a parameter that prevents the nodes to post claims that are below the the cost of the fees so we could only increase the fee and solve for this uh, yeah i'm uh coder mentioned in the uh discord that he that, that that this existed this ability to throw this flag um i don't know where it's set exactly if it's set at zero which would make make it 22 or 23 um, per session, or if it's set higher than that, I think it should be set higher than that, but, um, but I'm not familiar with the mechanics of how his fix works. Uh, I, it simply does, I don't know where it's set exactly, but what it does is before submitting the relay, it does, if the amount of relays that you're going to claim for are enough to pay for all the claim and proof transactions that you're going to make using past data. So, and we are showing that on, on our null runner to alert everyone that's making relays. We have a nice red number showing up there in the future. Bro. I don't know if it's red, but it's there. <laughs> what I mean is it's easy to fix with only a simple parameter change uh just by setting these fees high enough and if the no runner doesn't do that it's so it's only burning tokens i mean he's losing money it's not it's not logical for large no runners that make up for most transactions to don't do, don't do this to benman's point i think the more important issue is because there's two separate well there's a few issues, but the two biggest ones being discussed are um, the economics to the node runners of these claiming proofs uh, being larger than uh, the reward itself, um, which, which has, as is being discussed, has a couple of um, solutions. Um, the bigger issue, from in my mind, is the the bloat uh, that's happening and understanding uh, the relationship between uh, gateways. Uh, number of gateways and gateway behaviors uh, and that blow. Uh, we were looking at, we had a block size last summer of four megabytes. We had a vote that increased that block size to eight megabytes. And we're now doing um, <clears throat> uh, like six megabytes um, uh, block sizes. Uh, I don't think it would make, I, well, my intuition is that it's not going to be, it's, it's, it wouldn't be fair to say that uh, adding nodes as a gateway added two megabytes to the block size. We've also added our rat pocket bridge, uh, which has a lot of transactions happening, and so on. Um, and there may be other other factors playing in, um, but it would be good to understand um, if there is a relationship between adding gateways and uh, increasing this block size, because that if that is the case, that will be a constraint on. Uh, the growth efforts that we're trying to push forward in terms of onboarding additional gateways and bringing more relays and revenue to the network. Um, so in my mind, the most urgent priority would be for uh, those of us who uh, can crunch this data um, and, and discuss and reason about 
the causes of uh, the block size increase to to get to the bottom of that, so that um, uh, so that if PNF needs to slow the roll on onboarding additional gateways and bringing more relays, we can we can be informed enough to to make the call on that um, while we figure out uh, other scaling solutions if, if they're if they're needed. quite a bit covered here and we are coming up on the top of the hour. Any final thoughts we want to put out there? Okay. Ben Van, are, is there going to be a proposal going up in the uh, uh, forum here soon? Um, yeah, I guess if, uh, I guess since I, I found it, I own it. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I say I've already, I've already addressed this from my end. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll, uh, put up a pro proposal, um, and a separate, I guess, forum discussion for all the other things. Uh, I would just remind everyone that the, the proposal to uh, to not not let this turn into a huge thing this raise this mitigation by raising the minimum uh, is simple. <laughs> Let's just do it and then try to figure out every other mitigation method out there. Is there uh with what you were looking at, Ben Van, is there uh, basically like, are you able to look at a block and be like, hey, this many, you know, uh, you know, megabytes or whatever would be saved if we apply this parameter in this way? Is that is that something that can be quantified? It can be. I'm I I only did visual inspection of blocks uh, and then compared them to blocks, you know. Uh, Two months ago, three months ago, uh, to just see what's happening, you know, the total number of real, the average number of relays uh, per transaction. Um, I haven't done any heavy, heavy research into exactly how many transactions would get cut at exactly what point. Um, is, is that something pocket scan? Um you know, Ben Van or Pocket Scan, is that something that could, you know, be be used in this proposal? Because I think if 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 the proposal was basically here's the problem, and if we move this one parameter, it would eliminate, you know, taking like the last block for an example, taking this block as an example, it would eliminate this many transactions or this much, you know, bytes or whatever. That would just be a very simple thing that I feel like people would just understand to be like, oh, okay, yeah, we could do that. Sorry, uh, I'm just taking notes. I, I will try to, to create a, a thread with all the information that Olshansky asked in the chat and also show the, the block size evolution and the, and the size of the transactions, the smaller ones, and how is that distribution. I don't think that raising the number of minimum uh, transactions for posting a claim is the solution here because there are other things to take into account more when we are introducing by chain multipliers and, and block and services that are not blockchain so we are not so we can no, no longer think that every session will have a lot of relays so that's why i don't like ben ban's idea but i think that this can be easily solved by some other small also parameter change Awesome. Well, whatever. Uh, I, I guess Ben Band, if you're uh, if if you're gonna write something up, um, that would just be my suggestion. As if there was some way to quantify, hey, this many, you know, sessions would essentially be eliminated due to 
uh, by upping this, uh, which would save you know X amount of block space. Because me, like my own my own thinking, that's really the data that I would need, right? Uh, to just be able to say, oh yeah, well that makes absolute sense. It's not like these sessions are you know going to make or break node runners or anything, because you know these are such small. We're, we're talking about such small relays per session. I mean, a node can handle uh, two hundred thousand plus relays a minute. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, <laughs> 10, like, or, you know, however many over the course of uh, a session, which is like an hour. So, we're, yeah, we're talking about just small, tiny bits of of um, relays here, if my understanding is correct. So just a way to quantify that would really be all that I need, thinking through this myself, to just be able to make this a really quick vote on my end of just, oh, okay, let's let's do this because it'll save this much, it'll save this much space, and uh, you know, yeah, it just makes a lot of sense if that was able to be quantified. Yeah, well, if if Romero's going to put together data, and as he says, the or I, I think I understood him to say he's got a better plan or a plan that he would prefer, um, then uh, do so. I'm definitely not going to fight about. Uh, it, I don't fight anymore at all. Um, sorry, guys. Um, uh, uh, I have presented the situation and uh, what I I believe is a appropriate immediate mitigation. If someone wants to do something else, go for it. It sounds like Ben Van has been domesticated. Is that what we're saying? You break my heart. <laughs> Sorry. Life's too <laughs> short. I take I take things way too personally and way too seriously. And I'm not losing sleep over a forum post ever again. <laughs> no, I, I will not post a proposal. I will try just to provide information so we can get this as quick as possible. We with all the data that we are lacking right now, that's all. So we can then put to vote whatever we decide. Beautiful. Well, we'll uh, look forward to seeing that. I think we'll wrap it up here and let this move to the forum where we can start uh, fleshing out what that looks like as a real solution. and. Uh, Hopefully, we'll uh, get a solution up in short order. Any final closing thoughts, or else we're going to wrap it up here? Thank you, everyone. Excellent. All right, y'all. Same time yep. next week, same channel. Thanks, Thanks everybody. <laughs>